is Jessica Gladstone, and I'm a doctoral student in the Department of Human Development and Quantitative Methodology at the University of Maryland. And I'm here today with Dr. John Marshall Reeve, who's a professor in the Department of Education at Korea University. So thank you for joining me today. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get into it. The first question I have for you is, when thinking about motivation and engagement, do you see motivation and engagement as being interchangeable terms or that they're truly distinct constructs? Uh, people are not just expressing their motivation. They're trying to do something uh, uh, purposively. So what are they trying to do? Uh, what's engagement, the function or the purpose of engagement that makes it different from motivation? And we find that students are trying to make academic progress. And that makes engagement different from motivation. It's, it's closer to coping. It's what students try to do to make academic progress. And then as we study it more, we find they're, they're doing more than that. They're trying to satisfy their motivations. And that's interesting because that makes engagement the predictor and motivation the outcome. And they're also trying to create motivationally supportive learning environments for themselves. So the important thing is that engagement has all this purpose, uh, all this function um, that is kind of not separate from motivation, but it, it's, it's enough to make it a distinct construct. And I think you can study engagement in its own right. In the study of engagement, there are different views about how many dimensions make up student engagement. So I'm interested in what your current view is on how many dimensions should be included in the study of student engagement. I, I, we don't need more confirmatory factor analysis on self-report questionnaires to find out how many factors there are. We've got plenty of those. I think we, we need to have research that looks very carefully and rigorously at students as they try to make progress, whatever they're working on. We watch them very carefully. What exactly are they doing? And if you do this, uh, I come up with three paths and they're doing three things. Uh, the first thing they're doing is they're working really hard, the ones that make progress. And I call that behavioral engagement like everybody else. Second thing they're doing, they're working very strategically or they're, they're smart, they do mental simulations, et cetera, problem solving, that's cognitive engagement and everybody will agree on that one. The third thing they're doing, they're trying to be proactive and create uh, supportive environments for themselves that they can thrive in. And I call that agentic engagement. So these are the three aspects of engagement I think are really important. They really predict who achieves, learns, makes progress. What are the current strengths and obstacles you see in the measurement of student engagement? Uh, we, we need to take disengagement much more seriously. Uh, we don't have measures on this. Uh, we don't have very good self-report measures. We don't have teacher ratings. We don't have uh, uh, observers ratings. We're not very sophisticated on the concept of disengagement. And I think that's, a, that's holding us back because that may be equally important in understanding who's making progress and who's not as engagement itself. And the measurement of engagement is uh, a sophisticated field because if you look at how people, there's lots of ways you can measure it in a reliable, valid way. And these tend to be intercorrelated. I think the measurement of engagement is, is a real strength of this research, but we haven't capitalized on it yet, especially with disengagement. Uh, so we've got a chance to make engagement a sophisticated uh, area of research. Okay. Are there cultural differences that need to be taken into account when thinking about the generalizability of student engagement findings? It, it, it doesn't matter what culture you're in, what gender you are, what age you are. If you're trying to make progress, there's three basic ways to do that. And I've outlined what those are. But if you look at cross cultures, like in Asia, there's some preferred strategies to success or progress, and that's working hard. Behavioral engagement is the path to success in Asia. But in the West, uh, you, you see emotional engagement is important. You're supposed to love what you do, be interested in what you do. Working hard is important everywhere. Agency would be important. So maybe the, the strategies that students prefer to engage themselves to make progress, that may vary. Uh, but I think the construct's still the same. In the East, they work really hard. And in the West, you're supposed to have passion and love what you do as paths to progress. Those are differences. Yeah.